Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Micah, and today I have the new Catrice products for spring summer 2019. If you didn't know, Catrice over here changes their line every six months, and it's been that time again where we have a bunch of new products. In fact, there are so many new things here to play around with for me that apart from some eyeshadow primer and mascara, I pretty much have a full face of new makeup to play around with. So this is definitely going to be first impressions. I cannot review these yet. I've only had these products for a few days. I've swatched them. I've taken pictures for them so I can review them on my blog, but I haven't played around with them at all. And that's why I thought I would sit down again and do another one of these videos. I have a couple of them already, so I will make sure to link the, uh, the one from last summer uh, in the eye right here. And I will make sure to link the playlist that I have of all of my Catrice and Essence videos in the description box down below. Now, when I do these videos, I always get a lot of questions like, hey, how come you already get these? But I live in the Netherlands and Catrice is a German brand. So over here in Europe, we get their products a lot faster than in other countries. So it could very well be, especially if you're in the US, that it's going to take a while for all of this to make it your way. However, that being said, I feel that in a few months time, Catrice will be launching these products slowly but surely around the world. That's usually how it seems to go. Um, so yeah, like I said, I have a full face of new makeup to play around with right here. I will be inserting pictures of the swatches that I already did. And uh, yeah, let's just let's just play around. Let's just get started. So Catrice has come out with a couple of new primers and I actually have two of them to try. And one of them very much intrigues me and I'm very curious to see whether it will actually work. They have launched a new like full face primer, a HD active performance primer, water and sweat proof. Um, that's something I definitely will be testing out. It also says sports proof. so. I think that if I wear this underneath my makeup when I head out to the gym or something like that or go to dance class, I will certainly be able to test that out, but it will be a little while before I can really see how that works. Um, and then of course, um, what intrigued me the most was this. Now this looks like a concealer. Their liquid camouflage concealer comes in the same tube. This is also called liquid camouflage, but this is their new under eye primer. So this is to prime your under eyes. And what it says on here is that it should uh, create the ideal base for concealer and it should reduce the look of fine lines and perfect the under eye concealer application. So it should make your concealer go on more smoothly and not give you as many lines. I'm in my 30s, so I definitely have some lines going on there. I also feel very tired this morning. I actually just woke up, so uh, I have a few bags going on there too. It's definitely not looking its best. So we definitely need to work on that a little bit. So I'm first going to be applying this primer. Shake this up, because usually with these you need to shake it up. It looks like it's like a white product, so we'll see. Yeah, it's like just really white. It seems to be a bit thicker than I'm used to, so I'll take a little bit more. And then I'm going to use my favorite primer brush. I like to apply primer with, with a brush, uh, if you don't know that about me yet and this is by Real Techniques, it's their complexion blender brush and I'm just going to use it, apply this all over my face. All right, so apart from poking myself in the eye with that brush when I was nearly done, um, it went on pretty nicely. It, it feels a little bit thicker than my usual hydrating foundation uh, primers that I like to use. And I, I was afraid at first that maybe it would leave a little bit of a white cast, but it kind of goes on transparent onto the skin. So. That being said, and now it's time for the under eye primer. I think I'll just apply this as I would a concealer. Feels very smooth. Quite silicone-y, I have to say. Does it really reduce the look of fine lines? I don't really think so, but if my concealer applies onto it very nicely and it doesn't crease as much throughout the day, that would of course be lovely. However, I don't really think you need a separate product for an under eye primer because if you have a bog standard eyeshadow primer and you apply that on the, on your, onto your under eye area, it actually helps quite a bit as well. I'm using one by Catrice. This is a new, this is their eye foundation waterproof eyeshadow primer in the matte version. It also comes in a pearl. This was released last summer uh, and I really enjoy this. Um, but that's what I'm going to be using as an eyeshadow base. 
So before we're moving on to foundation, I actually want to feel my skin a little bit to see. It's a little bit, well, not super tacky, but you can definitely feel there's something on there. And also on the under eye, now that it's had a few like minutes to settle down, it feels a little bit like tacky, a little bit sticky. So maybe that will help to it help adhere the product to my skin, who knows? But before we get into foundation, Catrice has extended their new brush range. So I actually didn't take the old ones up here, but they've come out with these triangular shaped uh, face brushes in their previous launch, and they've now come out with some more. Um, they've come out with a new highlighter brush, which is this, this is just a, like a dome tip. And they've come out with a new concealer brush as well, which has that triangular shape. So I will be using those. As I'm nearly done with this makeup look, I realized that for the face, I completely forgot the two brushes that I had shown you at the beginning. So that's why I'm just telling you real quickly that I still have to test out a little bit further the concealer brush and the highlighter brush. I'm a bad blogger. But more, most excitedly, they've come out with a sponge and it comes with a little stand. It's purple, it has a flat edge, and then it's like, flattened top bit and then it's just a sponge like this. This is what it this is what it looks like dry. I wanted to come on camera first and show it to you dry and now I'm going to wet it to see what it will look like when it grow how how much it will grow. Right, so I'm back and this is how big the sponge is now. It definitely feels very firm. It's now a little bit more loose now that it's got water inside it, but when I was like squeezing the water out it felt like a very firm makeup sponge. So I hope it's not like pounding yourself into the face a little too much. So I will be using that to apply my foundation in just a little bit. In terms of foundation, I don't have a new foundation to show you, but I did want to mention this. Um, I have found uh, that finally Catrice has launched new shades in two of their uh, more popular foundations, I'd say. Um, I have the Liquid Radiance version. This is the HD Liquid Radiance version. This came out over the summer and I bought it in the Den Lightest Shade, which was, uh, what's it called again? Uh, light Beige. And they now do it in a lighter shade called Ivory Beige. You can see it's a fair bit lighter. It's also a bit more pink toned, which will be perfect for my skin. This only got one extra shade, one lighter shade, but the normal HD Liquid Coverage, I think that's what it called. I think it's called the Liquid Coverage uh, Foundation. It comes in the same sort of bottle, but then the writing, instead of being red, it's black. And it's a foundation that a lot of people love. And that shade range has been extended quite a bit. Over here, we sadly only get eight shades, but Catrice has come out with 30 different shades. So it's great for Catrice to finally be doing some base products in a multitude of shades. And it seemed as if the lighter ones really went a bit more light. And the darker ones really went a bit more dark because the swatches on the Catrice website showed like 10 swatches on light skin, on medium skin, and on dark skin. So I think, fingers crossed still though, because I haven't seen any of these darker shades or lighter shades apart from this one because I just like the texture of this foundation a little bit better. Um, so I haven't tried that, but it seems, it looks very, very promising. So I'm very excited for that. Um, so for now, I will also be inserting some pictures here of these two shades side by side so you can see that in fact It's the same foundation. It's just in a different shade So I'm going to be using ivory beige in the HD liquid radiance foundation To apply to my face to see if this is a better shade match for me because I didn't really like the texture of this foundation when I tried it last summer, but it was a little bit too dark for me. It was like, and it oxidizes a little bit too, so that was a bit of a shame. So let's see how we fare with this. Right, so that's the foundation on. As you can see, it's a much better shade match than the other one. This is definitely my kind of shade. The sponge is okay. It is a little bit firm. It does kind of like, you can sort of hear it bouncing around, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I do like the shape of this though, because it, you can really sort of fit it next to your nose and really sort of get the foundation really into those little crooks there too. So I do really like the shape of it, but I don't really like the texture. I prefer my Primark and my AOA sponge a little bit more than this. So I'm not sure how much I will be using this, but in a pinch, it's good enough. So another new product uh, that is definitely new is a new concealer that they're doing. The One Drop Coverage Weightless Concealer 
full coverage which with hyaluron sweat proof i have it in the lightest shade porcelain it is a mini version of the foundation it has that same sort of packaging it looks really really cute actually um this is the lightest shade available i had a look at the swatches on the catrice website and there's one up which looked more pink but that also looked a lot darker. So I think that this will be a little bit better if I also wanted to do a little bit of highlighting because look at those circles. They need a little bit of brightening up. So I tried this on the back of my hand when I did the swatches, like the pictures for my review on my blog and it had a lot of coverage. So we'll see how this uh, goes. I think a little goes a long way. So putting two drops on the back of my hand. So I only have that much. But let's see. So this seems to dry down a little bit darker. I'm not sure if you can see that on my hand, but there's a darker patch around it where it's been drying down a little bit already. So this is one you need to work with quickly. So let me just blend this in. I think the sponge is a bit too big to really go into my under eye area and because it's so firm i can't really like mold it to the shape i want it to so i'm going to take a brush real quickly to blend out this last bit so i don't know about you but i think that that looks pretty nice it's got good coverage it blends in really really nicely i was afraid that it would dry down a little bit too quickly and that it would be difficult to blend but with a sponge or with a brush, it looks really nice. I think the concealer and the foundation also look really nice together. Like they seem to be very hydrating and very sort of glowy as well, like both of them. So I like that. I still have bags under my eyes. Like I said, I started off this saying this video that I was a bit tired, so I do still have bags. I will not be able to cover that up, but it has very nicely brightened up those inner corners and made it made me look a little bit more awake than I did before. So I, I quite like this. I do have to say that I was afraid that the shape would be a little bit too dark of the concealer, but it's actually blending in really nicely with this foundation. So I think that in both of these, I have found my good shades. Then we're moving on to a product that I'm very nervous about. Catrice has come out with a new gel texture bronzer. This is the Bouncy Bronzer Caribbean Vibes and I got it in the lighter shade, which is Aruba Vibes. I think this comes in two shades, but I thought this would be a matte bronzer. And I'll show you. It's super duper shiny. This is more like a dark highlighter than an actual bronzer. So I'm a little bit afraid to use this because I'm not sure what it will do. But I think I'll give it a shot. Uh, I, I want to try everything I have here, of course. So let me see, I think I have my little stipple brush here from uh, e.l.f. So I think I'm just going to dab that in here and sort of see if I can hit the perimeter of my face and do a little bit of contouring with this. Hmm. I think that looks really pretty. Like... It's definitely adding a little bit of darkness to my skin, but nothing too much. It's nothing too crazy. And I thought because of how glowy it looks in a full-on swatch that it would really work more like a highlighter. But actually, now that it's on my face, I definitely think you need to use something like a stipple brush to get this on and really sheer it out. And I'm pretty impressed with this. I hadn't expected this at all. I'm going to leave it at that because I have another powder bronzer to try as well, but it, this is not the most intense bronzer look ever by any means, but I'm pretty impressed with this little product. I thought that it, would going to, that it was going to look too shiny, but actually it looks quite nice and natural on my skin. comes in a darker shade as well, I believe. Um, sticking with liquid products, cream products for a bit, they've come out with a new uh, highlighter as well. This is the golden dust highlighter drops they seem to be very very gold so on my very pale complexion it probably won't look great and when i was swatching this i was trying to shake it up and then use a little pipette but i've had this issue with these catrice liquid highlighters before where the liquid isn't sucked up by the pipette so let's see if this actually now works no it's not it's not working so you have enough product on the actual pipette though so you can sort of like dab it on like that 
and then use a stipple brush to apply this to the high points of the cheeks. Oh, that was a little bit too much, perhaps. Oh yeah, that's a nice, it's not as gold as I had expected. It looks really, really yellowy in the, in the tube, but it actually looks quite nice. Yeah, I quite like that. I have another, uh, another one from this, um, liquid highlighter line that I actually like a little bit better for my skin tone. It's more like a peachy pink shift, whereas this is very gold. But then again, this is their spring summer collection. So I have to say that in the summertime, a little bit of gold can be pretty, uh, if you have a little bit of a tan, which I don't really tan though, but I do have to say that I quite like that highlighter. Again, I also have a powder highlighter to try. So I'm going to leave it at that. For actual powder, They've also come out with a new loose setting powder. This is the Glow Fusion Loose Powder in the shade Translucent Radiance. Now they came out with another like illuminating like press powder last time. And that wasn't a really great success because it was too dark for my skin. Uh, and this also looks quite pinky peachy. So I'm not sure how this is going to go. They've embossed the brand logo sort of in there with like the holes to get the pot powder out and what that leads to in my opinion is that you can't really get a lot of this powder out of the packaging so a bit of a packaging flaw there so I'm just going to shake it upside down a little bit just to see if I can get some more powder out look at that I was shaking it like crazy and hardly any of that powder has come out so it looks quite dark when I tried it on my hand to see if I could swatch it it didn't look as intense because it seems to have more of a translucent quality that it does sheer out so it's not packing too much of a punch so i'm just going to take my sigma powder brush and see what this will do okay it doesn't seem to darken my skin so that's a plus let's do it so now that the areas of my face that i need powdering that i need that i think need powdering are powdered I don't think this powder is too offensive, actually. It looks very pretty, and it looks to be quite, um, uh, not super radiant on me, but it seems to just, like, set and not really change the look of the base products I already have on underneath. So that's a plus. For brows, there's a new product. Catrice is suddenly trying to do brows as well, and I think they sent me the wrong one. I think I got the ashy brown one but they sent me 010 medium brown, which looks to be too dark and a little bit red. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, let me just show you on the back of my hand. It's really dark. So I'm not going to be going in with any pencils or anything. I'm just going to see how this product performs as is in my brows. And I might have really crazy strong brows today for a change. Brow gel sets really, really quickly. I think it doesn't look too, too dark, actually. I had expected it to be a little bit more intense. It definitely sort of feathers your brows out quite a bit. I don't really trim my brows at the top because I think that looks a little bit crazy when I do that. But it does sort of separate and really sort of set your brows in place. As I mentioned, they set really quickly, but they don't feel crispy. So that's good. I don't like a crispy brow. And now we're getting on to some color products. Let's have a bit of fun. They have come out with their brush cleanser. So this is a Veramona color switch kind of thing, but like one of those spongy bits that can clean powder product off of your brush. So I'm going to be using that to sort of clean my brushes in between the colorful makeup application. And the thing we are going to move on next is this. And this is something I'm very curious after because the swatches were really, really promising. This is the Romantic Gardens Everyday Face and Cheek Palette. This palette comes in three different varieties. This is the one for lighter skin tones. They have one for medium and they have one for dark. You get a mirror in the lid. In the palette, you get a bronzer, two glowy br blushes, you get a matte blush, and you get two highlighters in the middle. The pen sizes are very reasonable, I have to say, and this comes with a ton of product. This is 28.2 grams of product. That's quite a lot. That's like almost five grams per product. That's pretty good, actually. I think what I'm just going to do is layer these up. Um, 
I'm going to start with the bronzer first. And since I'm not sure how intense that bronzer is, I'm just going to use my large stipple brush. And it actually fits the brush quite nicely, so that's good. Right, so the bronzer is definitely not offensive. It looks quite nice on my skin. I do have to say that you do have to work quite a bit to blend it very well. It could be because I didn't set my entire face with powder, of course. It does have a tendency to sort of catch and that you really need to swirl your brush around in order to make it blend. But I don't find that too offensive. I would like to try and see if I can show you all of these blushes. So I think I'm gonna go from lightest to darkest and just see if I can apply these to my face. Oh, that's really pretty. You see that? Ooh, it, it is quite powdery. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a bit of kick up there. That first sort of like peachy, glowy blush looks really pretty. It's not too shimmery or super shiny. It has a little bit of glow to it, which I prefer. I prefer my bron um, or my blushes to actually be matte because then you can go in with a highlight. If it's too shimmery, I don't really like that kind of look anymore on myself. Um, but this is very pretty indeed, I think. Oh, that's very pretty too. See, makeup artists always insist on putting peach blushes on my, on my skin tone and I don't always like it, but this is a peach blush I can get down with. So that's the peach blush and just sort of dot it on the apples of my cheeks. Yep, this is definitely the darkest one. Has a bit more luminosity to it, I think, than the lighter peach tone. Um, but it looks pretty. So for highlighter, I'm going to start off with the subtle one because I think that that's the best. See if this does anything on my skin. Oh yeah, this has a pink shift. Not sure if you can see it, but it's very, very catching. Very sort of Becca Prismatic Amethyst, Urban Decay Aura, if you're familiar with those. It's really that sort of vibe. I really like that. It's very pretty. I actually don't want to put the other one on, but for the sake of the video, I am going to be putting on the other highlighter as well. Oh, that has more of an icy quality. I had a, I had expected it because it looks to be more of a champagne, but it is a little bit more icy. That's definitely like a highlighter you can see from space kind of idea. That's definitely a lot more intense, so they're right that there's a subtle and an intense highlight. The bronzer I like, the blushes I like. I think that um, these are definitely something you can hunt down. I can, uh, even though I'm trying it for the first time, yep. I quite like that. So I'm quickly going to apply my eyeshadow base on uh, off camera because uh, these are in Catrice products. Time for eyeshadow. I'm very excited. Catrice has come out with a bunch of new eyeshadows. I have two different products here and I'm going to see if I can sort of combine them a little bit, but I don't think they really go together. And let's just start talking about this little palette. Look at how thin this is. Isn't that fun? This is the Exotic Traveler Travel Palette, I think. This comes in four or five different shade selections. I went with this because it just appealed to me the most. It has mostly everything in here has a bit of a shimmer, I do have to say. There isn't a lot of matte. These two look matte at first, but they have a bit of a sheen to them. So they're a bit more like a satin, I'd say. But it's got your like light sort of shimmery lid shades. You've got two shades to deepen things up with. And this like, like it's like a very light pale copper, like a peachy copper that looks really, really stunning. Maybe I can pull that one in. So I definitely want to try that. But the star of the show, I hope, <laughs> is going to be this. This is the Suburbia Volume 2 Frosted Taupe Eyeshadow Edition. This comes in two shades. There's also a Volume 1 that has warm tones. But because they're coming out with a cool tone palette, I was like, ooh, cool tones. This is what the shadows inside look like. This, when I started seeing swatches on the Catrice website, this looked to me like it could be doing something similar to the Nambla Soul Blooming palette because it has those like whimsical purples in here too. It's got some nice neutrals too. I'm very impressed with the color selection that's in here. Not very sure whether these shades are going to work very well. I don't always have the best of luck with Catrice eyeshadows. They did a larger palette in their previous range as well. 
and that I didn't like at all. But I do like some of their like rectangular eyeshadow uh, palettes. I quite like those. They do some stunning singles as well. So Catrice can do a good eyeshadow, but with these larger palettes, it, it's not always the best. The palette itself doesn't have a mirror, any sort of reflection you see there is just the plastic from the packaging. And what's not super handy is that there's a little bit of a lift to the actual compact. Because this, this has a lot of like, it's got one, two, three mattes, I'd say, but it doesn't have like a very light brow bone highlight shade for me, maybe this one, but it seems a bit too yellowy, peachy for me. It's got some stunning all over the lid shimmers too. I definitely wanna play around with that purple. Um, and then this, I'm not sure if you can see that, but this shade right here is a duochrome. It has like a blue purple shift. So let's play around with some cool toned eyeshadows. I'm just going to do the look and sort of speed through it. And then I will let you know how the eyeshadow is applied. I will make sure to point at each of the shadows that I start applying. I thought it might be handy to actually bring you in a little bit closer. So we're starting the eye look right now. Right, so that is the eye look done. I hope that it helped that you could see a little bit more up close. I tried to use as many shades as I could. I can't really say much about this yet. This seemed to be a little bit more powdery. I'm quite impressed with the quality of these shadows. Granted, I haven't tried all of them, but they aren't too powdery. They don't have any fallout at all. And I do really like how vibrant the purple looks on the eye. It looks a lot more vibrant than I had expected. I really thought that it might like just disappear as it was applied. This shade layered on top is really, really pretty too. This works nice as a liner or like a shade to deepen things up, I think. But again, I will have to try it in the outer V to see how powdery it actually is. This is a great shade for in the crease. I really, really liked it. And I put in a bit of this gray just to give it a little bit more definition. But I quite like this look, I have to say. It's not too muddy, which with cool tones can sometimes be a problem. But so far, I'm pretty impressed. So this may be something you can also find worth looking into when you start looking into these products. Good thing to know about this palette. It retails for $8.99 and it's, uh, it contains 15 grams of product. You get 10 shades, so that's 1.5 grams per eyeshadow. That is like an Urban Decay eyeshadow. That also comes with 15, I believe. So that's actually pretty good. So I'm pretty pleased with how much product you're getting in these in this uh, eyeshadow palette as well. So that's good. Doing mascara real quickly off camera again because uh, one of them is Catrice, but I just use this to put, add a waterproof layer. As with any new release that Catrice does, they have new lip products as well. They have new tinted lip balms, they have new lip glosses, they have new liquid lipsticks, and they have a new gel texture, sort of like sheerer, hydrating lipstick, bullet lipstick formula. So what I think I'll do is just apply each one of these on and talk you through them. So this is the sheer beautifying lip balm. This is that tinted lip balm that I told you about. This is fashion movement because it is a mauve colored lip balm so i don't think this will do too much as you can see it has a bit of color to it for a lip balm but on my lips they are quite dark already so i'm not sure that whether this will show up much it definitely is like a my lips but better kind of shade which is what i was ho hoping for it feels very nourishing though so that's really nice so if you're someone who really likes sheer lipsticks then this can be actually quite a good thing to try so blotting that off my lips to see if we can try this. This is the Generation Plump and Shine Lip Gloss in Dusty Rose Quartz. And I had hoped that this would be quite shimmery, but it seems to be more pink than anything else. And it's really sticky because when I pull it out, it has a bit of a pull to it. I'm sure if you can see that right there next to the lip balm. And it is shiny like you would expect from a lip gloss, but 
I'm not a lip gloss kind of girl, so lip gloss is always a disappointment to me, almost. So despite it looking very sticky when it comes out of the tube, it doesn't make your lips stick together, so that's good. It, it's, a li it's a little bit lighter than I had expected as well, but for a glossy lip gloss, I think that this is actually quite nice. It's not super duper glossy. Let's just move on to something that I am excited about. I got two shades of the new Power Plumping Gel Lipstick. That's what these are called. I got a neutral shade, which is called... No, 030 Speak Up, and this just looks like a very pretty nude lipstick. And can we just take a moment to appreciate the bullet of this thing? It has a really nice cut to it, and it says Be Brave, and then the brand name is embossed into the lipstick as well. So as you can see, compared to these two, it has a fair bit more color, but it has a little bit of a shine to it, and the gel texture promised to make this look, uh, feel very comfortable on the lips. So let's try this. Very creamy, very rich. If you like a very comfortable lipstick, then this is, I think, really, really nice. It's supposed to contain hyaluronic acid, so it's supposed to be very hydrating. It probably means that it's not the longest lasting. I cannot test that out right now, of course, but it feels very, very comfortable. I also picked this up in a bright red shade. This is the shade 090. The future, future is fun. They seem to have a very sort of like feminist kind of vibe to the new line, which I quite enjoy. And this is a really nice bright punchy red. It again says be brave on one side and then Catrice on the other. So let me see what this will look like. But before we do that, a little bit of a swatchy swatch right there. For a gel texture, I think this has really nice coverage. It is a little bit sheer. I can still see my natural lip color coming through a little bit in real life, but I don't really seem to see it on camera. It's a really nice bright red. It's not as bright as I'd hoped. Again, probably because my natural lip color is quite dark. It is a nice punchy color though. So I'm sorry if my lips now look atrocious after that red lipstick, but I wanted to save the Generation Matte Comfortable Lip Liquid Lipstick for last. So I don't think this is supposed to dry down, I'm not sure. It's in the shade 050 Danger Lips and it's like a brownish reddish neutral shade so we'll see. Let me swatch it. It's like a very intense neutral shade so but it has a little bit of a red undertone and I quite like that in a nude so I think it will be dark enough to cover up this mess. Yes, I'm quite happy with that. It's a very soft, velvety texture, but not too drying. I'm not sure if it will dry down, like I said. It might. This is my kind of nude. It's dark enough to do something for my face. Doesn't make me look dead. I really like this. Yes, it seems to have a little bit of a dry down. It starts becoming less glossy on my lips as well. But we're not there yet. I still have one last product, and I think this may ruin the entire makeup look but we'll see. I have also bought the Catrice Hydrating Prime and Care Spray. This is supposed to be a primer, but it should refresh the skin with aloe vera, matcha tea, and some other like caring products. Um, it's supposed to be a spray that you put on before makeup, but I feel with something like this to refresh your face throughout the day, it may not only be a primer, but it can also just work as something to make your makeup look a little less powdery like Max Fix Bros, so that's how I wanted to use it in this video today. It seems to have a pretty strong mister on it, so um, I'm going to hold it a very far away from my face. It does have really like clear drops, like my face now just feels wet, so this may be better as a priming spray or like one of those sprays that you spray on to refresh your face in the on a hot summer's day, something like that. It may be really nice to put this in your fridge. Like, put it in your fridge so it gets really cold, and then if it's like a heat wave, that might be a nice one. It is a spring-summer collection, after all. So those were all of the new products from Catrice that I bought. It's a full face of new stuff. To be quite honest, my first impression on these is all quite positive. I really, really like a lot of these. Like, already, but of course I have no clue how anything will wear yet. So I'm very curious, for instance, how this under eye primer will affect the wear of my concealers. I definitely want to use it with some other concealers and see how that goes. 
I really want to uh, try the concealer a bit more on its own without the primer to see how that will wear. I'm very impressed with the shape match of this new uh, lighter version of the HD Liquid Radiance. I'm pretty smitten with the face palette and the larger eye palette that I just showed you. The lipsticks all seem really nice as well. I think Catrice has done a really good job. Of course, I don't know how everything will play out yet, so I will uh, make sure to update you in a few months down the line. Essence will be reviewing new, uh, will be releasing new products at the end of February, so I will lump all of those products together in a giant haul update sometime in April, I think. So a few months down the line, I will be coming back to these products to show you how they worked for me and tell you a little bit more about that. In the meantime, though, all of these products will be coming up as reviews over on my blog, so I'll make sure to link my blog down below so you can already uh, watch, uh, have a look there and see uh, full reviews on some of these products. I churn them out like once a week, two times a week sometimes. There's quite a bit here and then with Essence coming up uh, shortly as well, I need to start moving products around very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, so far, so good. I'm pretty impressed. Good job, Catrice. Woo! So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and that you now have an idea what to look out for when you spot these new products in your local Catrice store. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. would very much appreciate it. It helps getting my videos out there. And if you would like to see more by me, if you want to see that Essence video and that whole update, then please do subscribe to my channel. I make new videos three times a week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 5 a.m. Central European time. That's when my videos go live. And if you click that button, that red button down below and the notification bell, you will not be missing any of my videos. So I really hope you have a great day and thank you very much for watching. Bye. I put the